but of course the one that's been running longer contains more data you know, it's nicely formatted it can be parsed using let's say awk we've already looked at awk so you can parse this out with awk for example supposing you want to parse this you'd simply awk and the field separator is comma and you'd want to let's say print so let's go ahead and indicate our single colon and that's going to be curly brace print me let's say field number one from and we actually inadvertently didn't get the single quote there from our uptime file from Linux CBT and there is the first column and of course we can then print additional columns let's cat the file again just to see what may be of interest and that's uptime.stat but perhaps uptime.linuxcbt.stat contains two so supposing we wanted the timestamp as well as the number of users connected to various TTYs and maybe the load average for one minute just to give us a sense so what we could do we now know that we need to get in addition to column one we want column two and column three to pull that information so that's almost everything so that brings us out and actually there should be a comma let's see three users and we've got one two so that's the second we don't want that one so let's take this off we actually want one three and four and this will bring us the fields that we're interested in let's take a look we didn't include the number of the column and there's four so now we've got one three and four which can be further parsed if there is a new delimiter now the common denominator delimiter here is space so we could for example rerun awk and since space is the default take the default with curly brace and instruct it to print let's say the time that the process was run which is column one perhaps the number of users which will be in this case the fifth or this will be the fifth column so let's go with five and maybe even six so that we know it pertains to users and maybe let's go with the eighth column and this should give us a sense of just those fields so users average and let's see how this has pulled it out so pull the first as this the fifth as three the sixth as users so three users this is the seventh and it took the eighth as average so let's get the ninth as well and that's how you'd pull those fields out and you could further parse if you'd like using space and then eventually using colon if you saw fit so you saw fit so you could continue to pipe into awk over and over again to get the fields out that are of interest to you now while we're doing that the file continues to build notice every passing minute it writes so 14 15 16 17 and it's about to write to the 18th minute and you can compare and contrast the load averages for one minute or parse out five or 15 and so on so now we have jobs running in two contexts from the system-wide context and the user-wide context now root may manipulate any user's job so let's go ahead and manipulate Linux CBT's job as root using crontab e so this here should be labeled as a since it's the first in the list so we'll run crontab e followed by the username Linux CBT as root so run as root this allows root to manipulate any user's job so we'll find our root shell again that just manipulates the entry in var spool cron if we take a look let's stat it we should see that it was last updated 15 13 and three seconds and a number of nanoseconds so that's cron tab e you could also manipulate the file directly using the editor but cron tab is just a shortcut which invokes your editor so cron tab and this in fact we want the user so this is the user linux cbt not the principal and let's go ahead that is actually e 
for the user. So we're going to edit the user's cron file. So let's go ahead, Linux CBT, and our editor is off, although we could modify it with it. But let's go ahead and export editor equals nano semicolon or to be sure that it was done ampersand ampersand then cron tabby so now here's the job and this is the user's entry so supposing we wanted this to be updated every two minutes then instead it'll update every two minutes and if we restat the contents of the file you'll see that it's been recently updated and we can also use cron tab to list a particular user's cron tab entry using of course we keep omitting the user option and that's LU so this shows you the jobs that are defined you can also define multiple jobs let's just update our notes that's going to be cron tab edit the user's jobs or cron tab list the user's job run as root lists users job or jobs and this edits users job or jobs if you make changes of course but it flags the timestamp change on the file which causes cron d to wake up and notice the difference now the test of that two minute incremental or stepping should be reflected if we take a look at the users directory let's take a look it's now 1521 so now if we look at the uptime files, we should see that at 15.21, in the 21st minute, uptime.stat was updated, which is the system-wide cron tab entry, but uptime.linuxcbt.stat was last updated at 15.20. So that means at 15.22, it'll be updated because it's every two minutes. So we'll give it 40-something seconds, and that'll be updated. And we can also turn off the system-wide entry by just using nano, and including a comment since we have it running as the user anyway so a hash mark here turns this off in the next minute so long as we save the changes quickly before the next minute comes so that cron d sees the changes you can include you can include any number of jobs here and have them run now we should also note that cron d will process any number of jobs that are listed in etc cron dot any directory that is it is told to read so in cron D, for example, there are two entries. Let's cat star. We've got this zero hourly, which runs, and as we can see here, run parts, which processes a number of items from cron.hourly. So there's a job in cron D which references the hourly schedule, which will run jobs defined in cron.hourly. Run parts, or run dash parts, is just a utility which will process sequentially all of the scripts or config files indicated in a given directory. So run parts takes a look at for this particular zero hourly file which is what is indicated. It looks at cron.hourly and it runs this script zero anacron every hour of every day, every month, every week and so on. Then sysstat runs and it checks disk activity every 10 minutes just to see what it's doing generates a daily summary of process accounting and so on so these are system tasks that are run automatically for us by our Red Hat Enterprise system now let's take a look to see what's changed in this user's world with respect to files so now we see uptime.linuxcbt.stat which was last updated at 1520 has now been updated at 1522, which is what we expected to see. So this is now going to be updated on a two interval or two minute stepping as opposed to one minute stepping from 1520 to 22 to 24 and so on. We also note that uptime.stat was last updated at 1521 because we disabled the entry in a system wide file and we also saved the changes before cron D woke up at a particular at the next minute. So we're able to trap that before the change was made. So there are a number of cron directories for different schedules that are relevant. Weekly, daily, hourly, etc. You can take a look at any of them. So if we LSL cron star, you'll see the entries that are in each and what happens on various schedules. Now next we're going to talk about anacron as well as at and batch and then we'll look at the contents as a consequence of what zero anacron does we'll also schedule one-off jobs 
and show you how that works. But just in a nutshell, cron is always running on your system. If you check config list cron D, you'll see the run levels in which it runs. When you enter single user mode, it doesn't run. But for all multi-user modes, it runs because the assumption is the system's up, it's connected to the network, it's accessible. But let's just note as a feature, however, let's just note this as a seventh feature, that it runs in all multi-user modes, which means it does not run, so it does not execute in single user, which is run level one, mode, which means that when in single user mode you need not worry about cron jobs that may require network access, intra and internet access in order to perform their duties. Cron will not run in that run level. So if you init 1 or init S to go into run level 1, then you'll see that the cron D daemon will have stopped and not execute. So you can define your jobs with ranges, schedules, based on steppings, you name it. Rather straightforward just man cron tab check the layout of the file and you'll see how to run jobs both globally as well as or system wide as well as user wide so next, next let's take a look at some of the other things that cron will allow us to do by way of at batch and anacron